Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now every year I like to give Invicta at least a chance uh, at a decent review. Um, <laughs> needless to say, this probably isn't going to be that review. These watches to me are just ridiculous and I don't understand why Invicta fanboys love these things. So I'm going to try to be nice. Again, I'm going to try to be objective if I can. But anyway, let's just get into it. Here is a kind of tattered and torn box that they ship these in. I mean, this thing looks like it's been on a six month voyage across the ocean. It's all beat up. Same goes with the watch box. And again, this isn't gonna be a normal review where I go over every little aspect of the watch. Cause honestly guys, I just, I just don't care that much about Invicta watches. So, and I know there are going to be some Invicta fanboys out there that are going to absolutely trash this review. I expect that. Bring it on. But guys, here's what I really want to know. I want to know why you like these watches. I mean, I, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. I mean, the build, the fit and finish, I, I just, they're so subpar from anything out there. I just don't understand why Invicta people like these watches. Plus, especially this one. These things are massive. I mean, this watch almost weighs a pound. I mean, a pound. I think it's like uh, 392 grams, which equals 14 ounces. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Ugh. All right, close your eyes. Oh, God. Jesus, my eyes are bleeding. Holy crap. All right. The watch box is all beat up to crap. I mean, honestly, because the watch inside is so heavy, it's just like caving in the sides of the, of the watch box. There's your little manual and warranty and whatever crap that is up top. There's your big Invicta logo right there. There's your manual back there. Uh, I mean, look at this watch pillow. Look how beat up this thing is because of the weight of the watch. I mean, it's not very well made to begin with, but uh, there you go. All right, man, this thing is heavy. All right, let's get all this crap out of the way. And I'll give you the basic specs of the watch. Again, this is not, and I repeat, not going to be a full review. So, uh, and another thing, you know, if you want to check out some of my other watches that I've reviewed on my channel, check out my Amazon shopping channel. I'll make sure to put a link in the description field. This will not be among those links. I wouldn't wish this on anybody else. Okay, there I am being mean again. I apologize. Uh, anyway, I have an Amazon watch store. I have tons of other watches I've reviewed. Check out the link if you want to buy a watch from my Amazon watch store. I do get a small commission if you buy from my Amazon store, so I definitely appreciate it. Anyway, guys, this is the Invicta Bolt Zeus 200 meter quartz chronograph, and this is model number 27095. I've already showed you the packaging. Here is the incredibly heavy watch. They could, you know, they should call this the Anchor Series because it literally, I mean, this thing almost weighs a pound. Uh, you're looking at a 53 millimeter case. Yeah, I said that right, 53 millimeters. And I'm going to bring out some other watches just to show you how incredibly, insanely big this watch is and how heavy it is. Uh, it's 22 millimeters thick. Uh, it's 62 millimeters lug to lug. It's on a 35 millimeter stainless steel bracelet. Again, it weighs 14 ounces or 392 grams, or again, almost one pound, a pound is 16 ounces. Uh, it's got a mineral crystal. It's water resistant, they say, to 200 meters, which is 660 feet. I wouldn't take this thing 20 feet below the surface. Uh, and it's got a Ronda Z60 quartz movement. And again, it's, you know, it's battery powered. So give it a couple years. Um, so tell me what y'all think, man. I, <laughs> I mean, I think this might be the ugliest watch I've ever seen. Now, there are some other versions in the same model line that are definitely going to try to snatch that crown. Uh, and let me show you some of these other versions real quick. All right, let me slide this over to the right here. Here is the 31622 with the black dial in yellow and red accents. Jesus, that's ugly. Here is the 32414 with the white dial in blue and green accents. I swear, they're all trying to out-ugly each other. Here is the 32415 with a white dial in blue and yellow accents. And I think this actually might be the ugliest. I think this is uglier than the one I have now. This is a 32416 with a white dial in yellow and red accents. So there you go, guys. There are plenty of choices of ugly to choose from. So... <laughs> 
There you go. Uh, I, and another thing, I just don't understand, again, why Invicta guys like these watches. I mean, they're crazy, crazy heavy and big. I don't know if they're, you know, falsely equating weight with quality. I, I just, I don't understand. I just don't understand it, man. I really need some guidance. So all of you Invicta guys, after you leave your nasty comment, which I know you're going to, please tell me why you like these things. I mean, they're definitely different and they are definitely original. I will give Invicta that. They have some really original designs. Of course, they also have some homages, tons of like Rolex Submariner homage watches that they make too. But, but anyway, I'd really love to know why y'all like these things. All right, so before I show you some other picks, let me go get some other watches and we'll compare sizes. Now I've got some kind of medium to bigger size watches and let me just show you the difference. Here's my range man. Look at this thing compared to the range man. I mean, especially look at the thickness. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean look at the size. And the range man is not a small watch at all. Look at the size difference. All right, there's the range man. Here is the uh, all metal G-Shock. Again, not a small watch. There you go. Look, this thing just dwarfs it. The G-Shock could almost fit just inside the dial. Let me give you a profile view here of the thickness. There you go. All right, so there's the G-Shock. All right, here's the Sumo, my Seiko Sumo. Again, not a small watch. There you go. Again, look at the size difference, guys. Look at the thickness. Look at the lug to lug. There's my Sumo. All right, let's get a, uh, here's a King Turtle. Again, not a small watch. Look at that. Again, let's get a profile shot. There you go. And last but not least, my orange, what, uh, third gen monster. Again, not a small watch. Another profile view. So guys, this watch almost weighs four times as much as any of these other watches. I just don't understand the weight. I don't understand why they're so big. I just don't get it, man. Again, maybe equating weight with quality. I'm not quite sure. Another thing, the bezel, it does turn, but what's it, what's it good for? <laughs> there are no markings on it, but it does turn. There you go. And it actually turns quite nicely. It's got pretty good uh, turn action, almost no back play, maybe a little tiny bit. There you go. All right, let me go ahead and show you some pictures of this thing, some uh, macro shots. All right, here's the first one. Here is that really nice picture wire. You know the wire you use to hang pictures in your house? <laughs> that's, basically, that's basically what this stuff is. Here's that. All right, next one. Here are what they call the mustard dials. They kind of have like that goldish mustardy color. There you go, a close up of the uh, Invicta logo. Enjoy. Here is a close up of uh, more of that picture wire <laughs> right there. And there's that hydro plating. You can see that red and white. And I'll show you a close up of that here in a minute as well. Uh, here are possibly the biggest crown and pushers on the planet. Signed crown, there you go. That's gotta be a sign of quality, right? Having a signed crown? No. Here's another one of those uh, mustard dials. You got your day dial up there at was about 10 o'clock. You got your 60 minute or running seconds over there at what about two o'clock. You have your chronograph dial down there at six o'clock. You got your date window over there at about four. Enjoy that. What else here? Uh, here's some of that hydroplating. You can see right there in the middle, it looks like it wasn't quite done, I don't know, maybe correctly. It looks like it's like peeling off or something. I have no idea what this design is of, what the picture is. I have absolutely no clue. Here is the left side of the case with all of those picture wires in there and that big, I don't know what type of screw that is. I, I, guys, I'm at a loss, man. I'm just absolutely at a loss. Again, don't know what the hydroplating is, what that graphic is. Uh, here is the screen printed case back, and this will absolutely wear off with use. This is not laser etched or laser engraved. This will absolutely wear off with, with you know, prolonged use. And the last pick 
is of the stamped buckle. There you go. So guys, you know, normally I would say, hey, look, you know, I'll put a link in the description field for you to get this thing. I will not be doing that. <laughs> I will try it on though. Um, gosh. You know, I try at least once a year to give Invicta a shot, but then they, they put out crap like this at a retail of $899. I got this one for like $188. Jesus Christ, that's heavy. Look at that, man. Again, I got it for about $188. The next day, it jumped up to $360. I've seen them as much as $500. I mean, the prices are all over the place with these watches. All right, let's go ahead and kill the studio light. I'm afraid to move my hand because it'll just, the watch will weigh it down and it'll clunk on the desk here. All right. Ugh. I have no idea what this loom is going to do. So let's check this thing out. Let me kill the monitor as well. No clue how good or bad this loom is going to be. Let's take a look here. It looks like the, uh, the inner chapter ring, all of those little dots are loomed. That's actually kind of cool. Okay, and it's already faded. All right, now to the naked eye, this loom is already faded, completely faded. The camera might be picking up just a tad. Let's zap it again, just to be fair. It literally lasts for about eh, maybe 30 seconds tops. There you go. And it'll start to fade here in a second. And again, now to the naked eye, it's totally gone. But the camera might be picking up a little bit of it. Jiminy Christmas. So guys, tell me what you think. Uh, Invicta fanboys, you know, bring the comments on. I know you're going to be really pissed off at me. Again, I like to give Invicta a shot at least once a year, and they never fail to fail me. <laughs> so uh, guys, all I can say is stay away from these watches, man. They, they're ridiculous. They're incredibly overpriced. They're, you know, counting on people not knowing anything about watches to buy these things. I mean, I think the movement inside is 20 bucks, and then you have, you know, three or $400 worth of useless metal around it. So, man, I, uh, again, guys, stay away from these watches. They're an absolute joke. I mean, there's so many much, much better brands out there where you actually get a lot for your money. And Victor's not one of those. Again, I just don't understand it. I, I just never understood it. As always, make sure you like and subscribe, and make sure you click that notification bell. I definitely appreciate it when you do that. As usual, I've got a ton of cool stuff coming up, so make sure you stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next review. Take care. Bye.